Hello everyone and welcome back to PHP Motorsports Park for the second race of the fall season. We're in our last chance qualifying. These are the people who did not finish in the top 10 and are now racing to finish in the top four of this 20 minute race to progress to the final. And in that top four currently, we thought, oh wait, we can't do moon super four today. We got a scuffed setup today. We had to revert back to regular phone setup due to uh, some scheduling. Uh, yeah, we gotta like leave really early today. So we don't have enough time to set up fully with our regular camera setup. But what we do have time for is to get some names. And I've been stalling this whole time to get those names as they've been taking it nice, easy around the track. So in this LCQ, leading the pack is William Frazier and next to him is Baron. Behind them is Alex Seguin, who's usually in the final. And uh, that looks like Vadim. So that's our current top four. We have a slightly smaller grid. But they come out to the front straight, and our flag bearer is about to wave the flag. The flag's waving their away. They're going to break away from the top. The top four are going to try to keep their positions, but it looks like someone in the back is trying to go way outside on the outside line through there, through turn one. He does, it looks like it makes up one position that's going to put him on the inside. Actually, it's going to put him right in the middle. He goes in the middle of three wide and tries to make the most of it, but he does lose out. Well, actually, no, he's stuck on the inside there, so he's actually going to make up two positions here. Alex carves his way through and is in the lead down the back straight, but Baran's got, will he get a good exit going into turn four? Almost, because he's getting bumped back. Will Baran try to make the move to take the lead? He backs out of it, letting Alex take the lead. Baran was inside my car. Oh, someone's in the dirt. Someone spun out near the back. It's a white helmet. It could be anyone. Really unfortunate. I know who that is, but I'm not going to call him. Really unfortunate for him. Bad, wrong place, wrong time, bad luck, I would say. Turn four on lap one is usually a disaster, especially if you're near the back of the pack, because you have so many cars going into such a tight braking zone. It's easily the most complicated corner of the whole track. Yeah, definitely. Uh, with turn fours, hard braking zone, very easy to lock up, and then there's the dirt that's been building up around there. We're in the fall season, uh, but it hasn't rained in a while, so that's why the grass is all yellow here. Uh, speaking of rain, the rain lights for Scott Miller actually made it up to fourth place. So what is that? What is that? After last one, we got Alex Geron. Uh, Dive up on the inside a little bit too wide. He's going to push him out a little bit wider, force him to back off, but he's still going to leave the inside open a little bit but that's going to allow the Rainmeister to be on the inside there. But it looks like someone else wants to help out the guy on the outside, but he's going to dive up on that inside line. It, will he have enough? Uh, there's a little bit of an over-under or undercut or whatever you want to call it. And then there's going to be a huge race to three wide into turn four. There's no way this goes well. It does not go well as he is uh, over does it a little bit. He takes a little bit of a shortcut. He does fall in behind the people he was racing with and safely rejoins, although cutting the track a little bit. But he holds it together very impressive. Wow. I saw what happened. They all break, and the, I believe his name's Nick. He's a new racer out here. He broke a bit too early into four, which is understandable. You don't, you haven't mastered the breaking point into four uh, if it's your first or second time out here. Scott, the Rainmeister, who has been racing here for many years, took the optimal breaking point, which was much later than Nick. And that actually caused a collision and that bumped Nick off the track. I would say that's a racing incident because... Um, it's three wide into turn four. <laughs> it was three wide into turn four. I don't think Scott was expecting the race in front of him to break so early. But they're not in a battle here. We see William Frazier gonna try to go around the outside of uh, Scott Miller, the Rainmeister. Yeah, he dropped back many positions. I think it was William in the front row, but he's dropped back out of the top four. Really unfortunate. Nick is back in that battle, making it a three-part battle once again, and they're going to be going into turn four again. And will he be able to? We're about to find out. Through this breaking zone. Oh man, he's got the inside. Will he break later? Will he back out of it? It looks like he's. Oh, right he, on the curb. Oh, he's fighting. He's fighting. Conveniently placed tent right there. But <laughs> it looks like they're just going to settle in for now. We got the uh, 
We got the standings, and it is Mitchell who's in second. I got your name. Congratulations, Mitchell. Keep it up. Yeah, Mitchell up in second, chasing down the leader. And then we still got that huge battle of someone tried to dive up on the inside of the Rainmeister. There's a little bit of contact, but they both hold it together. And that fighting continues as they dive up onto the inside, too wide into bus stop. But the Rainmeister is just not letting that go. Yeah, if you want to get past Scott, you got to be committed. Scott will not let you by. Yep. As, oh, almost. Going around the outside of light bulb. That turns into the inside of double apex, and they make the move. Yep, he does get past him around the outside of that. Diego made the move. So one of the new races out here, Diego, and that's the matter today. He managed to get around Scott. Good job. Yeah, showing great pace out there. And then speaking of great pace, we've got Nick following William Fraser diving up onto the inside of turn one, maybe, but does not quite have it. Maybe they get really fast. Yeah, this is just great action that we're having out on the track here. And William takes that corner very slow. And fortunately for William, uh, Nick had to like shave off a lot of his momentum. So it's going to be a closer battle into turn four. And he's good on the brakes. He's a little bit onto the bump strips right there. And William's going to try to dive up onto the inside of the following corner. And Nick's going to hold him there try to keep him honest he's gonna have the inside for the next one and still the cutback is taken again oh. by William to make it too wide but at this point I think Nick has it secured so as long as he can close the door uh, through top of the world and into light bulb Brilliant he has that the action from Nick. And, uh, and that gave uh, Diego a chance to catch up now this is a uh, there's a lot of racecraft involved here what I mean by that is knowing how to do little bit, they're bumper to bumper. Uh, I don't think I see a position change quite yet. William's still stuck on the back of Nick. But we have these two by two battles for the top four here. And here's fifth place. First in the elimination bracket zone. Nick, if he wants to make it into the final, he has a lot of he has a lot of uh, catching up to do. And ten minutes into the race, we're about halfway through. We gotta see if he can do it in the second half, especially if third and fourth especially battle. Oh! If he goes off the track, that's not gonna help you. Yeah, a little bit of overdriving right there. He drops down two positions and now he needs to refight for sixth and fifth place, respectively. And speaking of fighting for fifth and sixth, fifth and sixth themselves are fighting through those sequence of corners right there. Yeah, Diego is being really aggressive trying to take that spot, but he's being over aggressive. The level of discipline you need just comes with race experience. Diego reminds me of my first few races out here. He's going for a lot of moves that just aren't going to help you in the long run. You, it's it's understandable why he's doing that. He really wants to fight and gain that position back, but you're ultimately taking one step forward and two steps back if you're trying to be open. Nick and Diego here are employing the human DRS technique of putting their head down in the straights, <laughs> but uh, unfortunately for them, there have been... Uh, backrests affixed to these go-karts here so that isn't quite as effective but maybe there's something to be gained here it's the psychological effect yeah head That's down easy. gonna Ooh, overtake and Diego Did right up on the inside of William so yeah, we see it again Diego made the dive bomb and he made the move but he left the door open likely due to how he was carrying uh, too much momentum to correct his trajectory. And Nick take, takes advantage of Diego's shattered momentum here, but they're going to jostle for that position as they go side by side into bus stop. And here comes the Rainmeister to throw another wrench into this battle here as he tries to claim everything that he can, but isn't quite able to hold on to them at the tail end of Top of the World. And Nick and Diego still fighting side by side. Nick with the inside line, so I think he'll get this secured. I feel like this is a really good race experience for everyone involved here. Nick and Diego probably locked into a battle of their lives, but from my perspective, I feel like there's a lot to take away from this battle. If they want to watch this great replay and debrief it with people, there's a lot, they're, they're doing a lot of good things, but they're also making a lot of what I would call rookie mistakes. And you can this is their first season out here. It's only race two. Yeah, and they're doing great as the as the rookies there are, and they've been having shown some brilliant battles. These battles um, are really good. You don't get these kinds of battles in front because the people in front, they don't race as hard as they do. Yeah, they... Diego really <clears throat> shipping it 
try to get every opportunity. He's being extremely aggressive, which is understandable. That's the kind of mentality you want, but knowing when to be aggressive, it's very difficult to capture. And that's just going to come with more race experience. Oh, especially around the track, because you got to know where the moves work and where they don't. And honestly, this is great for learning, that aggressiveness, because then you're just going to immediately learn really quickly by just throwing it, throwing it around, and you'll figure out exactly where the limits are. That's so, that's what I did. That first season, I just around, saw what worked, what didn't, saw what didn't work. All right, don't do that anymore. Yeah, they've been showing some great entertainment out here. Yep, and Williams fastest lap, the person heading the fifth place battle, is an 80.8, whereas Baron has an 80.1. So it looks like William, where he is now, won't be able to catch up. But Nick has an 80.6. Yeah, that's that's top four solidified as Mitchell makes another move to try to get into first place for the second year. Phenomenal defensive work does not let him pass. That is brilliant movement by uh, Alex to maintain the lead because Mitchell actually was ahead going into turn one and the cart placement by Alex, perfect. Literally perfect. Absolute cinema. <laughs> How's the battle in the back looking? The battle in the back? Um, Nick is still right on the back of William Frazier. Let's go look at that. No longer on the back. Nick makes a move to the inside of turn four. Side by side into turn four. Nick on the inside, diving in. Oh, too much. He puts a little bit on the dirt. That's going to allow William to do a cutback. He bumps him a little bit, so shaves off almost all that momentum that he had flying through there. So he's going to be stuck on the outside through there. And then Diego's going to make another opportunity to move Woo! inside of William. And Diego moves up, and he's not done. Brilliant. He wants to make it side by side into top of the world, but actually, he wisely backs out. Folds him, uh, goes to the, folds to the back there. Uh, through top of the world and actually uh, just tries to build up his momentum so he can launch that attack. So side by side to cross the white flag, Mitchell with another attempt to go around the outside of Alex and turn one. Of course does not work. Did you really have to add the of course in there? That's just salt in the wound, man. I Mitchell's know, been trying to make this move all race and... At this point, that's just Mitchell's most accurate racing line. But the battle continues with Blake and Diego side by side. Woo! Really brilliant battles here. If that was the final lap, that would have been a tie. Yeah, but here we go. They're, they're still at it. And they're, no holds barred. It's the final lap. They're going to give us everything. So I actually do want to watch this group as we... Uh, keep an eye on the leaders, please. I'm, keep an eye on the leaders, all right. Yeah. Although that battle does look enticing. <laughs> yeah, the, we, the, this... I'm going to call it the rookie battle because uh, rookie battles are always intense. Always. These... Every... Half the racers in this group are all out aggression. They just want to be in front and stay in front. All attack, no defense. Yep. And that can usually lead to some of the most entertaining racecraft as we've seen in this LCQ. Why worry about the person behind you when you're faster? Yeah, that's, that's it. <laughs> but it looks like they're starting to settle out. And I'm just gonna go ahead and pan to the leaders as they battle to the line. Alex ahead of Mitchell. It's gonna be side by side. I'm pretty sure Alex stayed ahead at the line. And in third is, I believe that's Vadim and Baran in fourth. And that will round out our top four. It is Alex, I believe, who, yeah, it's Alex that takes it. The gap, 0 .004 between first and second place. A really close battle and very well fought for Mitchell. He had the pace, but Alexander, perfect in his defense. And that's what's going to promote him to start at 21st instead of 22nd for this upcoming final. Hello everybody and welcome back to PGP Motorsports Park for the final race of the second race of the fall season. That was a mouthful of words. That sounded better in my head. We're at the final right after the LCQ. Gridding up and the lead taking pole position is Ethan Acosta and starting next to him is Spencer. On the second row, we have uh, Sergey and Davidson. Hard to tell from this distance. I'm using my eyeballs here. That's all I got. 
So for most of this commentary, it's just gonna be me because Steven, really busy. In fact, Steven's all geared up, ready to head out. So I guess it's up to me. Oh boy, here they come down the front straight. And span to the flag bearer. And the flags wave and they're away. Everybody clumping up, we got a full 20 car, full 24 car race today. Going through turn one. Not seeing any collisions just yet, but Spencer gets away with it. Well, and we see Davidson sneaking into second, side by side with Ethan. Ethan, who didn't have a great race start. That Spencer's getting away with it already. But Ethan holding off second from Sergey, Davidson, Sebastian, and Paulo. Those are the people in the mix for our top six. Turning into turn four, Spencer's just a freaking rocket ship. He's already about half a second ahead. He's building a gap. But Sergey manages to sneak by and take second. The Grand Prix speaks for itself. Thanks. <laughs> that was Steven messaging me as he uh, left, as he's uh, heading out. So just for the record, Steven, he's, uh, he's got a busy schedule today. He had to leave during the final. So it's up to me to bring you this race coverage and I'll do my best. But round the light bulb, it seems everybody's kept it clean. No major incidents yet, and I hope, hope it stays that way. The front is starting to turn into its own train. Everybody's starting to level out. Ethan on the bumper of Sergey. Let's see if this turns into anything spicy. As they go back down into turn one, Paulo taking the outside. Paulo trying to get around Davidson. Paulo did not have a good first race of the season. So he's gonna really want to try to get that race win to get his championship back on track before it's too late. Paulo, our defending champion, currently battling for fourth. Spencer, I thought he was getting away with it, but it seems all of them have relatively similar paces. But there, Spencer, currently leading the race, gets a good exit out of turn three, going into turn four. Everybody grumps up, bunches up, groups together. We got some squabbles in the back, led by Randy. But so far, there have been just so many clean battles today. As we saw in the LCQ, lots of battling. And we're, the weather is actually really good for racing today. It's an overcast day. It's not too hot, but also not too cold. So the track is relatively cool, letting you really push those tires and get away with it. But as we can see, that battle, the battle for lead is starting to separate. Paulo makes his way into third. Spencer in the lead, but Sergey has caught up to Spencer. We may see a battle for the lead. Here we go. Both of them being really defensive, taking that inside line. And I think that we're gonna scope each other out for a while. These top five racers are all individual race winners. They all know how it feels to win a race out here, and they all have what it takes to win. They just, it's all about execution. Unfortunately, places three through five, which is uh, Paulo, Ethan, and Davidson. They've got a gap to catch up to our leaders here. And I think Sergey is aware of this. Sergey really, wa I think Sergey wants to build that gap before really making any moves. As the common saying around here, it's chess, not checkers. You, you want to be able to make moves strategically that set you up for a better long-term plan instead of trying to make simple short-term attacks that will hurt you in the long run. And while it's easier said than done, it takes a lot of race experience and making mistakes to really iron in those lessons learned. So it looks like the top, top five, top six, they've all level, leveled out. I'm gonna focus more on the battles in the back now. This is where a lot of the action happens and it's where a lot of things get missed. As someone who's raced here for three years, my battles were usually in this midfield group here. And in my personal opinion, this is where the most fun happens. While yes, it's really fun to win the race, we see Sebastian on the inside of David making a move. David holds it three wide through turn two. That's James Kemp on the outside. David reclaims, takes his, keeps his position followed by Sebastian and James Kemp on that inside. William Yi looks like he wants a piece of that pie as well. Oh, looks like people are catching up to the lead. Paulo has caught up to the top three. I'm gonna keep this, whoo, glad I didn't miss this. We've got a spicy battle for the lead positions now. 
Paula on the inside of Sergey. Will he make it? Can't close the door. Sergey keeps his foot in, and that's just gonna let Spencer get away. This is terrible for the race win, but really good for championship points in position. Unfortunately, all this intense battling is really letting Spencer get away with it. But we see Paulo strong arm his way into second. Three wide coming out of light bulb. That is Spencer, Ethan, and Davidson all battling for those positions as through the through the dust emerges Paulo, our defending champion, in second, and Spencer coming out in the lead. But now we see. Okay, Ethan and Davidson in that order going into turn one for positions three through five. And let's see what they can make happen. They got some really intense battles with the higher positions, but unfortunately the lead of the race, well, not unfortunately, unfortunately for them, but really fortunate for Spencer. Spencer's just getting away with it. He's running away with the lead. That is a consequence of battling too hard behind another car. You slow yourself down. So now catching up to that car in front, is that much harder. And if you're in second, trying to catch up to the lead, the lead is not battling anyone except themselves. So at that point, it becomes literally a pace race. And you just have to be faster than the guy in front. And if you're not faster than the guy in front, tough luck. There's my Will Buxton quote for the day. <laughs> but yeah, it looks like they're starting to settle in. Battle for third has turned into a little Sergey train. I'm pretty sure they're going to want to try to catch up to the leaders now. These top five probably won't be fighting too hard. So I'm going to turn my attention back to the rest of the pack here. You can see just how far ahead these top five are from the rest of the pack, which just goes to show how much battling slows you down on track. Here we see David, followed by Sebastian, William, and Randy. Randy lost some positions, but he looks like he's going to gain them back. Diving down the inside, and takes it away from William. That's not, that was James, my bad. James passing Williams. <laughs> I'm looking mostly through my phone camera here, so it's even harder to tell who's who. Fortunately, it's a good day, and everyone's wearing distinct clothing, and I made sure to try to get everybody on my paddock walk. But, oh, looks like we got some tight battles for the podium positions. Paulo's caught up to Spencer, so I'm gonna focus my, my attention back to the lead. Conveniently enough, all of the fun things are happening in my peripherals. And thanks to the widescreen capture of my phone, I can try to capture as, many, as much action on screen as I can, but my personal attention will be devoted mainly to the battles in, that I'm looking at, which in this case, battle for the lead, Paulo on Spencer. We got a battle for third, which is Sergey, Ethan, and Davidson. That order has not changed. Here they come. Spencer's fully aware Paulo is right behind him. These two are locked in. They are basically, if I can make the comparison, they are 2021 for Stafford Hamilton battle. These two are no strangers to battling each other for the lead. In all my years coming here, many of the championship battles are decided between these two just having their own go at it and everyone else just in the background. We will see how what Paulo can do to get past Spencer. Uh, before I left the house today, I checked the championship standings and the history of all the races here. And Paulo is at the top, but Spencer is in second in terms of overall stats. So these are two of our literal best racers here, duking it out for the lead. We got side by side through bus stop. Davidson really wanting to make a move on Ethan. Ethan not giving it up. And Davidson back and back out to try to catch back up to uh, Sergey. In the back, looking at battles through light bulb. Too wide through light bulb. That's some risky business. Light bulb is the corner we're looking at right now. It's a real, it's a deceptively tricky corner because it's really wide. There are many different lines you can take through it, most of them bad. But the, the light bulb itself is slightly off camber and it usually gets really dusty. So taking it really optimally every lap is very difficult to do, especially in the heat of battle. 
Ooh, we got lots of cars going through turn two here. Spearheaded by Todd Hutchings here. We got Todd, Harb, and Colin. That's the top three cars in this squabble we're looking at here going into turn three. Oh, at turn four, we got a battle here. Side by side into four. And it's Ethan who came out on top. So Davidson really wanted to get past Ethan. Ethan saying, no thank you, I want to keep fourth place and possibly steal third place away from uh, Sergey. And this whole time I've been trying to see who is in, who is behind Davidson in sixth, but I just can't, I can't pinpoint it. At least not through my phone camera. It's really, oh, that's Randy. He's wearing different clothes today, but he's got that IndyCar shirt on. Uh, fan of Scott McLaughlin. So uh, if you're a fan of him too, we got some IndyCar representation out here. So yeah, we got a battle for the lead. Paulo going around the outside. He's got the momentum. Can he make the move? Yes, he does. Paulo takes the lead of the race. And in the back, we got the uh, Sergey getting pretty defensive on Ethan. Ethan, who's got up to Sergey. We're gonna have a battle for three. Or a battle for third. <laughs> Side by side into three. Who's gonna get the better momentum? It looks like Sergey's got the better momentum, but Ethan keeps it on the inside. Will he be able to break late enough? Nope, he wisely backs out of it. You don't want to battle too hard into turn four, especially if you're not side by side going in, because you're just gonna compromise yourself. And Davidson giving him the bump draft to see if Ethan can make a move into turn six. That was pretty cheeky. So yeah, we clearly see Sergey on the defensive, gonna wanna take that podium spot home. Uh, but Paulo has taken the lead of the race from about fifth on the grid. That's our Paulo for you. Defending champion, showing us what he's made of once more. That's the cars, Paulo and Spencer, round in the front straight, going through roller coaster and down the front straight now, it's just battle of four. Let's see if they're gonna explode on us into turn one. Ethan, go around the outside. We got uh, Davidson and Randy taking the racing line. Get that better momentum. Really wanting to keep up with these guys. All four of these cars doing exactly what they should be with the optimal strategies and the cars they're given. We're seeing some top of the line race craft from these four today, if you ask me. Well, Stephen's not here, so there's no one else to ask. We're about halfway through the, the race now, so we're starting to enter the middle stages of the race. If you've been patient, now is the time to think about pulling the trigger. But here we see these four locked into combat. And it looks like they're gonna stay locked, so I'm gonna let the camera focus on some battles on behind. Give them some screen time for once. Normally the battles are so intense in front that it's really hard to keep on track of who's behind. So, uh, just focus in on who we've got here. This battle for third, still raging on. But it looks like they're still well behaved. Keep the camera on light bulb as I turn my head up. <laughs> it's really hard to handle the camera and look at the track at the same time. So uh, shout outs to Steven for being able to do that. I'm normally not the one handling the camera, but here we see Ethan going around the outside of Sergey. He's side by side in turn one might not work and Sergey wisely keeps the door closed just enough to keep Ethan behind him. All four of these races very disciplined in what they're doing. Any other battles in the back? Oh we got a battle for battle three going in here. In front of this train is Barb followed by I believe that is uh is that James Kemp? Yes, it is. James Kemp making it, making it through. Good job, James. Just carve your way through turns four and five. Brilliant move by James there. And unfortunately, that is, uh, it goes James, David, William. That's the first three in that mix of people I'm seeing. Focusing so much here. Let's tune back to the battle in front. Has anything changed? Nope. So updates on the standings of the race. I will get those names as they turn down the front straight and we can see the gaps in real time. We got Paulo leading the race, followed by Spencer now coming down the front straight. Coming out of light bulb, we got Sergey, Ethan, Davidson, and Randy. 
next we got Sebastian, James, David, and these battles, can't tell who it is from this angle, sorry, but they're going side by side to turn one, and they make it out. That is Alex and William. William gets the better of that. Alex in that black and blue race suit on the inside of three, gonna make a battle against William. And he makes the move, but will William have the better momentum coming out? Yes, William makes the over and under, and William Yee takes that position back. So we have a thick squabble. Ooh, dang. I turn camera back to turn four, and things are exploding. Davidson has had enough and takes that position away from Ethan. It is now Davidson right behind uh, Sergey. So Davidson's in fourth, Sergey's in third. Uh, ooh, Randy also gets up to fifth. And that puts Ethan back in sixth. Ethan, who started on pole position, has fallen back to sixth place. Absolutely tragic. But for the people in battling, and for the purposes of uh, recording the race, absolute cinema. <laughs> but yeah, really brilliant racecraft by all the drivers today. We've seen some of the best racing I've seen all season. Which, you know, I can say that because it's only the second race of the season. The races only get better. And the best part, anyone can come out and race. Anyone can come out and compete. So I just show up, sign the waiver, and if you got, if you made a reservation, you get to race. Bam. Oh, we got some side-by-side -side action going into turn one. That's Cole on the inside. And that is uh, Cole and Flynn on the outside. Get some nice battles going on as we fan back here into turn four. These front battles really catching up. Everyone diving into the most trickiest turn of the corner. We see Todd making some really good defensive moves against William and uh, the other William. Both Williams are next. Oh wait, that's not William. So that's Todd, William Yee, and Alex Seguin. My bad. They're both wearing the same color shirt today but with different helmets. You can't always go off the color of the shirt. <laughs> But here we can see, wow, third, the gap between third place and first is on the screen. We see Paulo in first here, followed by Spencer. And here's the battle for third. The four-way battle for third is on. We got Davidson. Sniffing around the outside of Sergey. It's the final lap. White flag is being waved. I'm gonna focus the battle for third here for this lap. It's the final lap. If you have a move you want to make, you got to do it now. And Sergey's going to go full defensive. Sergey has the most to lose here. And can he make it? Sergey defending the inside. Really hard to tell from this angle, but Sergey being super defensive. All of them very disciplined. Coming out of turn five, Sergey, Davidson, uh, Randy, and Ethan in that order. Going into turn six. And around the hairpin to turn seven into bus stop. And it looks like they're gonna save it all for the last few corners. So it's relatively difficult to overtake at the highest level here. There's not too many opportunities because of how well these racers know the track and the carts. But coming down the front straight now, we got Paolo Patini starting from fifth. And by his lonesome, he takes the win. Followed by Spencer who I can't keep up with on camera. Taking second, but a drag race to the line. We see third place goes to Sergey, followed close, very closely by Davidson. And I should probably focus on the finish line. Congratulations to all the races today. Great second race of the season. I didn't see anyone go off. Really clean race. You love to see it. And with that, we got a final drag race to the line. Cole versus, <laughs> Cole versus Colin. They fist bump across the line. You'll love to see it. They had a great race today. And we will see you at that podium. Remember to like, comment, and subscribe to keep up with the racing season. First of all, thanks for coming out. I know we had a little bit of a lighter crew today, only 30 of us, but still, uh, let's get battles out there, some good racing. Uh, we start off with third place today. Got a best lap time of a 78.999. Finishing 8.9 off the lead. 
third place. Sergey Kovostov. Good job, Sergey. Taking second place out there with the best lap of uh, 78.786, finishing 4.8 off the lead. We got Spencer Foot. And taking the top spot, best lap of the event at a 78.387, the 4.8 second lead. This is your reigning champion, Paul Tini. Get in there, Paulo. Ha, 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 ha.